Hello and welcome to the peripherals part of the hardware unit. So we talk about um, the peripherals on the computer. Peripherals are things that you plug into the computer rather than things that are inside the box. So there's another video about what's inside the box of the computer, inside the case, all the different hardware components for that. This is for things that you plug into the case to attach. So let's go for it. Most of them you already know. So keyboard and mouse. Keyboard and mouse, um, yeah, like I said, I think you know what they are. Um, if you want to highlight something, select something, enter some data, use a keyboard or a mouse to do it. Um, usually use a USB connection, even if they're a wireless mouse or a wireless keyboard, you normally have a Bluetooth dongle um, or a wireless dongle that connects into a USB port at the back of the computer. Um, that will then connect the keyboard and mouse to you. Uh, you may have specialist keyboards in certain businesses. Um, if you've ever been behind the tills in a McDonald's or something like that, they will have different buttons like push this for a Big Mac, this for a large milkshake, that for a small Coke, that kind of thing. So it just saves you having to type in things, um, make it a little bit quicker, a little bit easier for people who are working there. So yeah, that's about all there is on keyboards and mouse. All fairly straightforward. So next one, monitor or VDU, which stands for Visual Display Unit. Not screen. Screen is not a proper word. It's one that thing to use sometimes, but it's not really the right technical word for what it is. So it should be a monitor or a VDU is how you should be calling it. Um, obviously, used to display all the images. Um, you can have different resolutions and different sizes. They might be widescreen. They might be uh, sort of four by three. So for every three units of height they are, you have four units of width, which is a normal kind of size screen, then wide screen is nine units up and 16 across. So 16 by nine instead of a four by three um, just means widescreen or normal. Um, you can work them at different resolutions. Uh, also the projector that I'm running at the moment, um, that all works on the same thing. So it's all counting as a, a display uh, monitor. So whether it's projector, monitor, any other thing that you're projecting anything onto, it's basically a display unit and that's what you're using to look at whatever's on the screen at the time. So, next one. Printer, once again, fairly easy as to what it does. Ooh, magic, I'll go back. There we are, so, um, printers. Lasers are inkjet printers, that's the main difference. Um, laser printers, uh, you work more like a photocopier, so they use toner powder, which they then heat up onto a heated roller and they roll that image onto the paper. Um, their laser printers are generally faster to print out. Uh, they're a lot cheaper to run once you've actually bought them, but they do cost more to buy, especially the colour ones. Um, inkjet printers, which are the other most common option, is just have a very small print head that sprays very, very, very fine dots of ink onto your um, paper. They're quite cheap to buy to start off with, but they're very expensive to run for if you're doing a lot of printing. I think printer ink is something like the third most valuable liquid in the world after Chanel number no. five and liquid gold or something like that. Right? Printer ink is the one after that, so very expensive stuff. Um, and um, with inkjet printers, high running cost, low purchase, you do get quite nice photos out of inkjet printers and you can use photo paper which makes it really nice as well, so it's good for that. But Unless you're using them little and often, inkjet printers is not really the way to go. If you're using a, a lot of printouts, laser is definitely the way. If you only use it very, very occasionally, you might spend 50 quid on a new set of inks for your inkjet printer. If you don't use it for a couple of months, the ink will dry up if it's not being used. You have to buy another one, so it's costing you 50p or 50 pounds every time you do use it. So, not the, the best way of, of doing things, but if you're using things little and often, absolutely ideal. Uh, and some businesses um, use dot matrix printers. It doesn't happen much anymore, and if it does, it's normally on receipts. Dot matrix printers are basically like a cluster of little pins that the thing will bash the, um, the number or the letter um, onto a piece of paper, and it just like, hits it and leaves an imprint. Um, those are often used in places like Screwfix and things like that, where they have um, what's called carbon paper, where you have a, a bit of paper that's got the equivalent of ink on it, and then when you bash it, it prints on the first page, and then it goes, hits the carbon paper, and also prints onto the second page as well. So you end up with a, another copy 
of what you're doing, a, a carbon copy. Um, so some businesses still use that, but it's getting a bit old hat now. Most of them just use inkjet printers or laser printers. Uh, then scanners and cameras. Um, obviously, they just capture images and put them into your computer. So they're, they're digitizing an image, turning it from an analog image, which is on a, a sheet of paper or something that's in front of them. They turn that into a digital image. So scanners are just used to scan documents, um, posters, letters, pictures, that kind of stuff. Uh, and we'll only be able to do still pictures. You can't do video on a scanner. Um, cameras can do stills or videos. Mine's being run on a tiny little camera now. Um, and um, if you do have a scanner, that could also include barcode scanners. So when you're in Tesco's and things like that and they're scanning things on the barcode uh, scanner, so beeping stuff through and if there's an unexpected item in a baggage area, all those beeps, it's all running off a, a barcode scanner. So once again, it's scanning an image, it's reading it, and it's working out what the code is for the product. So that's scanners and cameras. And speakers and microphones, it's not like you don't know what they do. Um, microphones record sound, speakers blast the sound out. Um, and that's really about all you need to know. Um, the only thing we need to think about with these is um, the, what type of device they are. There are input devices, there are output devices, and there are storage devices. Those are the most common. There are a couple of others as well, but we don't worry about those at the moment. Input devices, anything that puts information into a computer. So a microphone puts sound into a computer. A camera puts images into the computer. So does a scanner, a keyboard and a mouse. You're putting commands into the computer. Output devices are anything that comes out of the computer. So speakers, sound is coming out of the computer. Through the speakers, it's an output device. Monitors, images are coming out of the computer so you can see them, so it's an output device. Printers, you're printing stuff out. It comes out, it's an output device. So uh, think about those. Storage devices would be things like USB sticks. They have a little USB memory stick. Plug it in your computer, you can store stuff on it. You can take it out again. And that's really it for peripherals. Um, hope that was helpful and see you in the next video.